the Father's discipline. It's in Hebrews 12, verses 3 to 17. We're going to focus around five verses, and then the homeless go home and read the rest. Right? Because I want you guys to start connecting the dots. But we're going to focus on this middle part, portion of the scripture or, or, or passage to get the heart of what God is trying to tell us. Now, I don't know about you, but I wondered why do believers uh, deal with persecution? Why are they tested? Why do they do trials? Why do they get sick? Why do they deal with pain, sorrow? Why, why do they deal with trouble coming their way? You know, um, when I became a believer, they told me life was going to be awesome. That that was going to be a great journey. And I today I'll tell you, it has been a great journey. It just didn't give me the understanding I need to endure the training or the joy that would come at the end. The training was... Uh, one that was very difficult. So, you know, I know I used to wonder, like, wow, man, so why this and why that? And I used to think, maybe my life is going the way it is because God is angry with me. Other times I would think that maybe it's just by chance. You know, it's just the same in the wrong place at the wrong time. Well, I started to think about this, and then some of the things that came to mind, like, how, how am I supposed to react to this stuff, right? You know, I'm, I'm trying to find out who God is, and I, I am young in, in understanding the Lord. I understand more of the world's way, and even the Hawaiian cultural way than I do that of God. And uh, so, it was really, really, really difficult. And I, I, I learned this, that a lot of the trials and, and the things that I faced was of my own doing. You know, I mean, I don't know if he has ever had some really dumb decisions made by you, but I have a lot of them. You know, and uh, one of the things I needed to realize is that when I met the Lord, the Lord wasn't going to change the repercussions of my actions. What he was going to work on or do within me is change my actions so I wouldn't have repercussions but blessings. Does that make sense? So, you know, I had to allow God to teach me. But if you're like me, I want you to teach me how to do all the right things. I don't want to learn through uh, hardship. <coughs> You know, I mean, I've learned now that hardship can be a blessing. But, you know, I don't want to learn a lesson by getting beaten up. You know, anybody who does, you know, let me pray for you. Something's wrong with your mind. You know, uh, but I realized this, that not only as I became a Christian trying to figure out what God is doing, is it? It's not only my decisions that causes me to face trials and tribulations. Do you know that sometimes it's God's will to let certain things pass through our lives? Does God make that happen? I want you guys to understand this. No. What He does, He steps back. A good story to read is Job. The Lord had blessed him. And the devil... You know, went to God and said, the reason why he's so faithful to you is because you keep blessing him. But if you take everything away from him, I bet you he stop praising your name. So the Lord says, I'll let you do anything except take his life. The story goes on, and this is just a real fast version uh, of it, so make sure you go home and read it to you know, better understand it. He is stripped of everything. It's just a children. It is his health, his wealth, I mean, just everything. And later, he was found to be faithful to the Lord. And the Lord, we gave him everything. Double portion. You know, and I was like, wow, oh, man. That's a really good story to hang on to when you're going through situations that you don't understand. Now, 
what I learned is this, and we all need to learn this as believers. We need to discern when God is working and when we're making mistakes. It's our own fault. But we must have this understanding. I believe it's Romans 8, 28, 8, or 8, 28, 9, 10, 8, 8, 8, 8, My brain, I'm having one of those moments today. Uh, and it says that the Lord will work out all things for good for those who love Him, right? According to His purpose or His will. What is the Lord? And so, I want us to see this because you need to understand. Because at one time as a Christian, I was afraid to make any decisions. Because if I made a wrong decision, that means I was going to get punished or I was going to suffer. And but as I started reading scripture and I started hanging out with my pastor, he goes, God doesn't want you to be like that. That's the enemy. Paralyzing you. God wants you to be confident in the choices you make. When you make choices, have you considered talking to God about your decisions, uh, the options that you have? And then if the decision you're making is the right one, if in your heart you feel God says yes, then do it. But what if it's wrong? Then I got to tell you this. God, according to Scripture, will turn what might not be so good into something good for His glory, for His purpose. You know, I thought about that, and you know, I said, what, what is His purpose? How could this be so good for me if it's for His purpose? Well, you know, I, I get, I, I'm sorry, I'm all dirty on the inside. I'm like so, like, like scream out of your kind of stuff. And I was worshiping, and I just felt the Lord's presence just like grabbed it and all the God. Um, his purpose, according to His purpose, His purpose is you. His purpose is that you would know Him for who He is and understand what He can do. With that knowledge and understanding, there is nothing that's going to keep Heaven's blessings from flowing into your life. Nothing. Uh, Sorry, I'm going to go on that. Um, I cannot begin to share with you the joy that comes with understanding that scripture. You know, um, life can be very difficult. You know, um, there's all kinds of situations we need to be in. You know, some dealing with sickness, some you know, uh, without income, you know, some, some with uh, broken families, some, some with uh, financial situations, I mean, just tons of stuff, right, sicknesses and all, but if we can get to this place that we understand that God will work things out for His purpose, which is in me, now, not only me, now, it's a two-way street kind of thing. When God takes care of me, when God blesses me, I become a testimony of His mighty hand at work. Once again, the double fold happens, we see God being glorified. But we need to understand that His purpose is us, human, right? The human kind. And He's going to work in each of us one at a time to reach the people closest to us. And so, all of a sudden it starts to make sense when I'm facing trials and tribulations. It's meant to empower me. It's meant to strengthen me. It's meant to make me grow in faith that when the next challenge comes around, I'm that much more equipped. I, I, I come to understand this, that you know, there's things that come in my life now where before I used to be a total disaster. I, I was broken. I mean, one little thing off, I'm losing it. My world is ending. I'm going to die kind of thing. And because of God moving in my life and He's got me past those things, when they come in my life, I was all one of those. In the name of Jesus, you need to step aside. And I don't double think it. I know. Why? Because I've dealt with that already. And 
I see the hands of God move. And so, when that happens, I let God's hand move. Does that make sense? Sorry. I don't know who the pastor, whoever the pastor is, should tell up my new thoughts. <laughs> Um, so what's going on in the book of Hebrews is that again we are reminded that a bunch of believers are thinking about deserting their faith they want to return to Judaism they're going through a lot of persecution trials and all kinds of things that say you know what I think I'm going to get out of here so the writer reminds them of something that was written in the Old Testament and it's something that we should also remember it's Proverbs 3, 11 to 12, and it says this, My child, don't reject the Lord's discipline, and don't be upset when He corrects you, for the Lord corrects those He loves, just as a father corrects his child in whom He delights. Now, I really love this because here we see God addressing the believer as His own children. Right? And, and he's telling them, don't get discouraged that I correct you. Understand my heart is for the best for you. So, I'm working on the message this morning. It was a really bad week for me. And I studied, I got it all in my head, and now I'm going to write it down on paper. So we get up this morning, I jump on the computer, and uh, things are not happening. So I have one boy, one of my sons at home, and uh, driving me nuts. I'm talking to him and blah, 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 going in one ear, out the other ear. You know, you tell your kid something and then they give you a look like, you know what you're talking about? I don't know if you guys get nuts, I get nuts. And so I said, I just came out from there, blah, 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 blah. It is right here on the ground, blah, blah, blah. There's nothing and I lost it about the fifth time. And so I'm working on the message, and I, I'm, I'm about this part of the message. And I really want, I come from the old school. <coughs> so you know what is the old school, yeah? Cracks. You know, my mom and them, they talk one time. You miss it, you get me licked into it. And so I'm talking four or five times because I don't want to be like my mom and them. Then I understand why my mom them was like that, because I probably would have, you know, done the same thing. Well, long story short. I am like snapping and I'm like tearing him down. I mean, I'm tearing him apart, telling him blah, 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 blah. He walks away and I jump on the message, trying to finish the message. And I read this part and I'm like, can't see what I thought, you know. Uh, so I finally said, no, I'm not going to do it. He deserves it. And the Lord says, he deserves correction, but not like that. So I went back in. I'm the hothead guy. Once I get angry, I stay angry. And I don't calm down really fast. Once this gets messed up, it takes a while to unwind this brain. It is that complicated. You know? And so I'm like trying to calm down and I'm like telling him, so do you understand what happened? I don't know. Oh, that just, I just got twisted again, right? And I all this stuff and finally, you know, I'm glad that we talked and everything and I I told him what I was trying to get across and I told him what was going on and why things got that bad and blah 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 and you know make sure that he understand I love him and I went and hug him and he said you know I'm sorry if I offended you or got you angry but I said I'm trying to explain to you but because you don't want to hear it you're not getting it and I said I'm not going to let that happen so I walked out I was able to finish without feeling junk. But I realized this, right? You know, um, the Lord wants us to understand that we belong to Him. Just like my son. I want him to understand He belongs to me. And that I will correct Him. But don't be discouraged by the correction. But encouraged. Because I love you too much to let you fool yourself. Or walk in a world that's going to destroy you with blind eyes. And 
And so you might think I'm being harsh on you, but let me explain my heart and maybe even apologize for my voice tone and my eyes digging your eyeballs out, right? Just so you can understand the heart of the Father. And so when I'm working the message, I started thinking about this. Uh, my parents are very different uh, as far as bringing us up. And I started remembering that as a child, when my mom would just go off, and my mom was the stern one, my dad was always mom drunk. Uh, uh, I, I would like run, like run away. I had plans on how to run away at a certain age, and how I was going to make it, and my plans consisted of all these guys that was going to help me out because they loved me, right, and all this stuff. And so I had a great plot on running away. Uh, every time my mom would come down on me, you know, uh, she was very harsh. It wasn't until I became an adult and realized that everything she did was to protect me. I didn't understand it then. I thought she was just trying to control me, make me her slave. You know, that uh, I was created or, you know, she gave birth to me so I can just do whatever they like and not understand. Uh, that, they, uh, you know, my, my mindset was, you know, I'm a kid. I'm supposed to do nothing and you're supposed to take care of me and do everything. So I was, you know, when I got older and I became an adult and I started realizing what the, what the world was expecting of me. All those little gems that I collected along the way, those times that I wanted to run away, the times I thought my mom was a scrub and I even wanted her to die, I felt so ashamed because what she was doing was teaching me lessons that would keep me from failing at being a good person, a good father, a good friend, a good husband, a good worshiper. I had no idea what was going on. And so, when I was going off on my son today, you know, um, and, and, and I, I'm sure, anybody? Get, parents, raise your hands. Anybody still with me? You guys understand what's going on, yeah? So you guys heard those words, right? You guys heard the threats, or uh, maybe not from them, but from somebody else, right? A threat, I don't know what man. Yeah? Oh, I had that. I, well, I told my mom I was running away. Well, I didn't tell my mom. I wouldn't have beaten. I told everybody else I was running away. Uh, but by the grace of God, somehow, I, I made it through. <laughs> and today, I wouldn't trade anything for the lessons I was taught. There's no different when it comes to our Lord Jesus Christ spiritually with children and when we don't get our way or we, we feel like God isn't being nice enough to us or isn't fulfilling his duty as God we stop talking about a runaway right I'm not going to pray anymore I give up on church never mind this church stuff and what we do is we sabotage our future and by the time if we're lucky enough to figure it out, most times it's going to be too late. So, <coughs> I've learned that if I would have run away, I would have lost on the blessing that I have received. Some 40 plus years later, See this, I don't know, this is about the age I guess, yeah, about 12. Now they're more advanced, they start at 3, I think they like run away and pack their clothes. Uh, but I think it's about like 12 to like 16 where, you know, I don't care. You know, I, I, I'm my boss. You don't own me. Oh, yeah, get your neck, you know. Uh, sorry, I'm not supposed to say that. But... I want us to understand this, okay? Because we can relate to that 
as parents to our own children and even as children to our parents, right? Because I, I've done it too, you know? You know, and uh, I want us to be encouraged about the God we serve. The same heart we have now for our children is the hearts our parents had for us. Maybe they didn't do the best job they could, but God can do the best job ever. He's not going to come short of His teaching and His blessing. But we've got to get to that place where we learn to <coughs> accept discipline from Him. So, we're going to look at three words that He used in tonight's passage to describe God's discipline in His children. And I need it to pull from the King James Version, okay? Um, something I want you guys to understand. I think it's great that we have all kinds of different versions of uh, reading the Bible. But a lot of times you need to go really go back to the basic, the closest to the translation of the Hebrew Bible. King James is one of the best, I think, that will give you the right uh, uh, place. And so it says this in verses, uh, Hebrews 12, verses 5 to 6. And ye have forgotten the expectation which speaking unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastising of the Lord. No faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastiseth and scourgeth every son whom he received. Now, King James Version, that was all French for me. Okay? But there's words in there that is not written in the other translations that we need to hang on to. And that's why I wanted to do this. Now, Chastisement, the first word we can find, right? Now, when we see this word, we can tend to think of getting cracks, yeah? When you hear that word, how many of you guys, when you hear that word, you think about getting whipped or licking the... Anybody? This is just me. I hear that word, I freak out. That means I'm going to get smacked, you know what I mean? And so when I read that, you know, the Lord's going to chastise, He's going to whack His child. You know, but we need to again go to the, the Greek and translate this and the simplest form that we can get this to and is used in many translations is that the Lord will discipline. Right? He will discipline his children. Now the word discipline, if you look up look it up, will uh, mean to train a child or to educate a child. So when we discipline our children, we're training them and we're educating them. See, all of a sudden, when you understand that word according to how the Greek wants us to see it, how God wants us to see it, then now discipline becomes something we should embrace because it's a time of teaching, right? It's a time to be educated. And so we need to realize this because... The purpose of a believer's discipline is to develop character. You know, we may not like everything that is going on in our life and we may not like some of the things that we feel God is doing. But if we step back and we look, a lot of the times we will find God moving in a direction that if we follow, it builds our faith. And our faith is the key. Now, yeah, listen, faith is the key into entering into the kingdom of heaven. Everybody goes, oh, but it's the name of Jesus. Well, it is the person of Jesus by faith that you receive. How do I know this? It is written in scripture where people would use the name of Jesus to cast out demons and the demons would respond back, I know Paul, I know Peter, I don't know you. I even know Jesus. And the reason that response was given was because the person who was trying to use the name of Jesus didn't have faith in Jesus but was just kind of counting on the power of that name. But the power of the name comes through faith. The Word of God has power. I used to watch these uh, movies, demonic movies, and so they put the Bible down, right? And they goes, 
yeah, and then all of a sudden nothing happens, right? And then as a young kid, I saw somebody uh, being prayed over who was demonically possessed, and they say in the name of Jesus, they put the Bible on that person, and that person is paralyzed. Uh, but in the movie, the, the, the person threw the Bible off. What was the difference? Well, one, that was the movies. The other is that the movie, the devil uses that kind of movies to cause fear in us and doubt. Fear and doubt does not work in the kingdom of God. Trust and faith works in the kingdom of God. And I want you guys to hear this because, you know, if you're dealing with something in your life right now, you know, you don't have a job, you don't have education, whatever, I don't know, whatever it is, are you able to trust God? Do you have faith in the name of Jesus, in the person of who Jesus is? Do you understand that it's just not the name that Jesus is your Lord and your God? And that everything that's written about him is indeed true. He is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. And all authority has been placed upon him. And as I trust him, he releases the authority for victory to come into my life. Do you have faith? You see, discipline is so important when it comes from the Lord. Because he is teaching us, educating us how to have faith that will move mountains out of our way. Chastisement, discipline, these trials, these tribulations, they strengthen us. Right? They strengthen us and they help us to create our commitment to grow. God bless you. God bless you. Our commitment to grow in the Lord. If you would have came to me maybe 10 years from now, maybe even five, I gotta tell you, I don't know if I, well, not I don't know, I know I wouldn't have the faith that I have to faith, like when we prayed for that blanket, to understand without a doubt the presence of the Holy Spirit is embedded in those, those that blanket, each stitch, each writing, each patch covered and anointed with the blood of Jesus, the love and mercy of God. That when James wrapped onto that blanket, he will feel the presence of God. I don't doubt it. I, I, I am not in one bit worried that he will not know that God is with him. I believe 110% that because of our faith, the presence of God will go with that blanket and that boy will be blessed. <laughs> One of the things I know for sure is that I have learned more in the valleys than I've ever learned on the mountain peaks. In the valleys is where I learned that I can trust God. In the valleys is where I was crying and saying, Lord, I need help. Lord, where are you? Lord, what are you doing? Lord, why is it so painful? Right? In the valleys, I met God. And He would explain to me. Now, I want you guys to understand this. He didn't explain to me. He says, Junior, you will suffer. No. You know? What I said he explained to me is that he came and he gave me peace and comfort. He says, hang on, we'll get through this. The explanation of what was going on happened when the victory came. I realized this, that my God was at work. That I would become a powerful testimony for his name. That I, his purpose, will bring glory to him. My testimony would shine on the valleys and the mountain top. And now when somebody else is in the valley, I can sing their song. Word for word. I remember the pain. 
I remember the egg. I remember the doubt. And now I can come alongside my brother and my sister and sing the songs of victory that will get them through that time. Because if God can do it for me, He can do it for you. How do I know that? John 3, 16. Jesus was sent for every single person. You know that I believe in my heart, I, and people may not agree, but that's okay. I believe this. You don't need to know God to be blessed by God. You don't need to know God to be healed by the presence of God. We need to know. We are the ones that bring the presence of God to people who don't know. I love it when people say, how do you know God will bless me? John 3, 16. And I always tell them, I said, before I even knew and loved God, He put into motion a plan that would redeem me unto Him. And if God can save somebody like me, then you have no worries that God will save you. You know, one of the great things, I love it when I see God move in people who don't believe. It once again shows us that God is not biased. You know, we intend to become very biased people who they kind of do the Christian people. We don't want to hang out with the other ones. No, we're supposed to be a testimony to the world. That's why our trials, our tribulation, our pains, our suffering, those are tools that God can use in our lives to bring glory to His name and us a testimony to the world we live in. Does that make sense? It's so important for us to understand. The second word is rebuke. When people hear this word, well, when I heard this word, I used to hate hearing this word, you know, because I'm going to rebuke you. In the school, old school I came from, rebuke was like a real bad, like, embarrassing scolding kind of thing. But that's not the way that God is saying it in here. What He's saying to us is that, you know, I want you, He's actually correcting you. He says, when I rebuke you, I'm correcting you. And so, the Greek word implies correction that is deserved by uh, conviction. So, you're doing something wrong, and so I'm telling you you're doing something wrong, and the conviction is the one that makes you feel jump. That's why we get all mad. You ever notice that when somebody confronts you and they tell you something, and, and they write, you get really mad at them? You're not mad at them because of anything else except... They found you all kind of thing, right? How dare you judge me? That's the first thing people will say. How dare you judge me? But a rebuke is not judgment. Rebuke is correction. Conviction follows correction. And that is the way God designed it. So when God rebukes His children, He is telling them, I am correcting you. And the correction I'm giving you is going to convict you because it's followed by conviction. Conviction is what makes us say, okay, yeah, I know I'm getting dumb and I'm going to correct it. For us to not correct it means that we are rebelling against God. True story. I wasn't even going to share this. I was sharing you with one. So I am still a person that needs a lot of Jesus working in me. So I have very few friends in my life. There's certain people I keep close to me and a lot of people I don't. The reason for that is I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat uh, very cautious about the people I let into my life. I grew up in a very hostile um, environment. I've been hurt many, many times uh, by people who was closest to me. And so I, it only takes one mistake for me to shut down. And when I say shut down is that my, my uh, guard goes up. I'll talk to you, I'll, you know, I'll even hang out with you, but you're not allowed on the inner side of my circle. Well, I had a situation at work where I was just going to say, um, 
my boss had said something that kind of like really offended me. Uh, so I got, first I was like, I, I, I felt this, uh, discouraged by what he had said. Then discouraged went to, I was hurt. Then went hurt to anger. Once I get angry, the old me, the one that I pray a lot that doesn't come out, starts to block destruction. I need to make you suffer for causing me pain. I'm praying, Lord, you know how bad I am, and you know me. You know, it's like two of my head. You know, I get two voices right one time, right? Lord, forgive me, and he's, that's okay, the Lord understands. We go after him, right? I mean, that's it's like, I'm like, mm, you know, and I tend. This is the problem, now. I know I need a lot of work, and my problem, and my wife can tell you that once I get into that ugly mode, I love it. Anybody ever gets like that? No? Jason? Yeah, me too. So I get in this ugly mode and I start to embrace it. Oh, where have you been all these years? <laughs> and I start getting ugly and I start embracing it and I go, I like this. I love it. So now I'm going to plot even better. Now how can I make you suffer longer? That's how bad I am. I tell you guys, you guys have no idea how much work Jesus has done on me and still needs to do. So I'm praying. In the meantime, I'm praying. I'm struggling. Blah, 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 blah. Long story short. Finally, everything gets reconciled. Everything is cool. Boss apologized for what he had done. It's cool. But I'm not done yet. Ugly is still happy. Ugly still wants to be Ugly is not satisfied to I draw blood. And the Lord is saying, stop it. Now, God is so... Oh. <laughs> Many church gathering of all the scriptures <laughs> that could have been, it had to be that. And so we had our lesson on that. But it was one that spoke of God's authority to rise up the dead, right? And bring to life that which belongs to him. And I was, I, I'm dead right now. I mean, <laughs> these dread bones don't want to come up, you know what I mean? And, and I'm like, I'm badly in it. Like, mm. And he heard it in, right? <laughs> and I go to church, I go home, and I'm like, okay, Lord. You know, um, I don't want you to think about it. This is, this is why I'm so bad. But Lord, I'm not going to think about it. Funny thing, God goes, don't worry. You don't have to. He knows me. I won't stop thinking about it, right? <laughs> he doesn't have to do anything. Now, I've been all the damage, right? So I get up to work. I'm like, you know, Lord, okay, I'm going to just say, I'm sorry. And let it go. And I go, but. I don't know if you guys had one of these, but. If. You know, you know, that I'm not ready. You know, something happens. Okay. I'm cool. I heard my boss might, might, might not be coming in. So my prayer is, Lord, you know, I'm cool with this. If you know, if you know I can come in, that's okay. He needs rest. Funny how I start to, you know, realize that all of a sudden he needs rest, right? So I get to work and realize he's not coming in. Oh, thank you, Jesus. How oh, insulting, yeah? The Lord must have like, looked at me. I don't know because I never like look up, okay? When I said, thank you, Jesus, I go, thank you, Jesus. I didn't go, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, so, you know, I went to work and everything. And bothering me, bothering me. I'm trying to focus. The Lord won't let me focus. In fact, I don't think it was the Lord again. I think it was all me, you know? You know you're stupid, you know you're stupid. I go, yeah, I'm stupid. You know how you kind of like pay it off so you can get past it. I'm stupid, you know. You know? And everybody's like, I'm quiet. Everybody's like, oh, you're okay. Yeah, I'm okay. You know, talking like I'm talking in my head. And now, um, finally told my friend, I go, you know what? I'm so damn. I said, sorry, I said damn. I said, I'm so damn dumb. And she was like, why? Go, God is telling me to stop it and I can't stop it. So, I'm looking for her to say, it's okay, you be angry. 
to you. Well, you, you better stop it. You don't even go to church. I don't know why. Oh, I'm so mad. So then I find out my boss went to the hospital. I'm like, mm-hmm. That's it, you know, I don't mess around with my kids. And I'm like, you are dumb again, right? But I'm sorry. So I go, but I ain't going to say get well in Jesus' name. I just have to say nothing. Yesterday, bugging me again. I was like, give me a break, you know, okay, I let it go, Lord. He goes, no, you didn't. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to just do it. We need to talk. I believe it. I don't want to talk to you, right? All right, no, we, uh, when we get, uh, when you get back, we need to talk. I think about five times I did. And then I said, you know what? You better do it because you, you're not having a good week already. You're going to have a bad weekend. You're going to preach tomorrow. I mean, you are messing things up right now. So I write down, okay, uh, praying for you. I had to kind of like weave this in, yeah? That's just me. Praying for you. Pray that you feel better. And when you get back, we need to sit down and talk. Jesus bless. I had problems pressing the send button now. You know? It was very close to my game button, you know, so I was really kind of wrong. But anyway, I was like, uh, send it up, and I was like, oh, Lord, that was so hard. You guys ever, do you guys know that that's not part of God's discipline? When we're supposed to do something, He's telling us to do it, and we don't listen, and we keep, we keep, we keep fighting, and all of a sudden it gets harder and harder and harder. The longer we refuse to listen, the more likely we will fail at learning the lesson. What was the lesson? The lesson wasn't that I couldn't share with the Lord, uh, my boss, that what he did was wrong. Because what he did was. Not, not, not uh, personally, but the way it was handled. The lesson was the way I dealt with it wasn't God's way of dealing with it. You see, I felt that God wasn't doing enough, and so now Junior knows how to handle people like this. Have anybody ever had that happen to you? And then I'm reminded of scripture that says none of us can come up with the plan that God has for our enemies, not even the greatest minds, for there is no mind greater than His. And I stopped. Well, this morning I woke up, I spent some time in prayer. I said, Lord, you know I'm a fool. I love you. I do struggle with my flesh. Thank you for correcting me. Third word is discouraged. This is much stronger than the uh, chastise or rebuke. Uh, this word speaks of severe beating. In fact, if you read throughout scripture, you'll find any of the disciples or the prophets of God uh, dealt with this. This is getting whipped, getting beaten, right? And uh, so there's three different styles of, uh, or, or different words that God is using that He'll use for His children. Sometimes, you know, some of us really, really hard head, yeah? And the only way for us to see, uh, to look up is to hit bottom. And so, the Lord loves us too much to allow us to continue that He will step back and let us hit the bottom in order that we look up. Now, that's different from the Lord testing our faith or seeing where we at. The experience is when we are so disobedient and rebellious that God has to remove His hand and allow Satan time to sit. So what should we do? No, what should be our response to, to God's discipline? <laughs> Hebrews 12, 5 to 7, A child do not make light of the Lord's discipline and don't give up when He corrects you for the Lord disciplines those He loves and He punishes each one He accepts as His child. As you endure this, this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as His own children who have Whoever heard of a child who is neither 
disciplined by its father, never disciplined by its father. So what we learn here is that you know we're going to go through those times of uh, trials and, and tribulations, but that fire that we go through will be determined by how we respond, how we come out of the the fire will be determined will be determined by how we respond to the trial. Okay. So. The thing is this, do we complain? Yeah, you guys just heard I had a big complaint this weekend. Right? I'm telling God that He doesn't exactly know how to handle this and so I need to, to be with Him, you know, for Him. And what I do is that I let Him, I tell Him basically that, you know, He He doesn't know what He's doing. I'm being insulting to His character. If we say that God is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, that all things is He knows, right? That, that you know there is nothing greater than Him, that His thoughts higher than our thoughts, then what makes me think that when I'm dealing with correction from the Lord, the discipline from the Lord, that He doesn't know what He's doing? Because I'm smart. Well I'm not that smart. Because if it was smart, if it were alive, I would realize that God's ways is the best way. And any time I fight or push back from that, it really shows a sign of unbelief. A sign that I don't trust. That kind of faith, that kind of character won't get me into heaven. Now, why I'm saying this is because when we recognize this type of things right on in our lives, we need to correct it before we get caught up in it and we find ourselves down the road and go to the Lord. Second, we, we become weak at God's discipline. You ever notice that when God is disciplining you, sometimes you just get a little I can't do it, I just like faint. Alright, I just give up. Well, I don't want you to become overwhelmed by what's going on in your life, but instead I want you to start singing songs of victory. Whatever it is that you're going through, I want you to not allow that to taint your faith, to, to cause you to give up. There's a song that is uh, written, although I forget the verse, uh, but it speaks of eagles, wings, and the Lord will lift us up. You know, and um, we need to be encouraged because God is encouraging us, not trying to discourage us. God is trying to build us up, not tear us down. But unless we are able to go through these times, understanding that He's going to get us through, we will never be people who are able to stand firmly on the Word of God and tear down the gates of hell as God intended us to do. Many of the church people, many Christians, many believers, they're weak in their faith, and then they wonder why they go into so much. Well, here's the problem. They're not going to as much, but any more different difficulties than anybody else. The difference is the, difference is the mindset. If God loves me, then why am I going through this? No, our mindset is God loves me too much to not allow me to learn this today. You see, uh, I, 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 when I was working on the message, there's several people that came into my mind that the Lord was putting on my heart. And one of the things is this, unless we can change our mindset to understand what God is doing, we sabotage not only our spiritual health, but our physical health. We become weak and weary and all of a sudden we want to give up not only on kingdom life but on earthly life. Does that make sense? So God wants to strengthen us. And so when it comes to this time of discipline and you're feeling weak and it's time to join hands with one of your sisters or your brothers to come to her. You know, um, there's many times I wanted to walk away from the feet, but I'm so blessed that I had people who surrounded me and said, stop it. And I had some really good friends who spoke my language and they just came on something stupid. 
right? You know how somebody might choose stuff, you, you want to say that nice stuff. But if you mentor like me, I need somebody mentor to speak to me in mental language. My mental language is something stupid, right? You get it down already. Because the nice car is going to pick up. That, that was, no, that's not my language. That was not for me, right? Something like more, more aggressive. That was my language, yeah? After they told me that, oh, okay, okay, I'm going to tell you stupid. The third is we should uh, submit to God's discipline. When we submit to God's discipline, what we allow happen is God to transform our minds. When we allow God to ch transform our minds, then our image is transformed. All of a sudden, we start behaving different. We start doing different things right, according to the Word of God. Now, we must skip it for us. I had one this week. Um, but because of the, the training that God has given me throughout the years of my walk with Him, I was able to pull out of it through the grace of the Lord. But if I didn't love Jesus, I can tell you what this much ugly would have had a good hold of me this week. To the point where I would just not want to stay there. Because that I recognize. That I'm able to do it. That I can control. But I have to allow Jesus to be in control. And when I did, I realized that he changed the whole atmosphere and he made it something that is so wonderful that I wasn't being, feeling exhausted. Do you know that it's more hard and more tiresome to be ugly than to be nice? It takes so much energy to be ugly. Anybody agree? But to be nice, it's like, I mean like, I can do that more than I can be ugly. And still a tiny strength. This week I was just over, I was burnt out. I usually leave the house at 4 o'clock. I wasn't leaving to 5 o'clock because I didn't even want to be at work. And when I got to work, the first thing came out of my mouth, I didn't get stuck. And I'm tired. I want to go home. It wasn't like that a couple weeks ago. It was just after ugly started to show its face. So as a parent, I understand the heart of God when it comes to His discipline. And we got to understand that. Okay? So, okay, what are the uh, results of God's discipline? Now, it's also in verses 6 to 8. We've read that, so I want to just share this with you. When testing times come, God is treating us as His children. So when you have trials and tribulation, you know how in the Bible it says, Oh yeah, John and Peter, they were screwed. They, they got whipped and they left being whipped, rejoicing that God is good and that it was worthy to be whipped. I used to read that as a demento, right? But now, I'm starting to learn that that's the heart of God. It's people that when this kind of stuff going on, you know what? Thank you, Lord. I'm reminded again of the com uh, commitment I made to God when I first became a believer. Lord, I love you. I turn my life over to you. Whatever you need to do with me, do it that your name will be glorified. All of a sudden, all this stuff has happened. I am like, I'm re retaking back what I said. I didn't mean that far. I didn't mean it that much. It was supposed to be only a little bit. You know, I never take me to you take it like in the whole complete thing, you know. But that was the deal. And so what I need to learn is that in these times God is teaching me and He's training me. Without that training, I am incompetent to do the work of the Lord. One of the things one of the things I love, and most people don't know this about me, is I love bonsai trees. I think they're fabulous. I think they're man, so beautiful. And the reason why I love bonsai trees is because the amount of work that goes into it. It doesn't just grow like that. And if you find one, because they do grow naturally in the wild, but it's never on a uh, uh, full soil. It's like on the cliffs where there's hardly any dirt. And they, they tend to just grow and, and become the sheep because of the what it has to live or what surrounds it. So I started to thinking about this and, and you know even more I love bonsai trees because of the size of the bonsai tree, right? Depends on the size of the pot that you allow the bonsai tree to grow in. So I realized this that God has called me to do many things and, and in order to be that many things he has made a pot that is specially designed for me that would allow me to grow as big and as wide 
as he has planned. So my bonsai tree may not like big fonts. My fonts are like be really huge. Bigger than my, my, my bonsai tree. Oh, she might have a smaller bonsai tree. I think it's a smaller one. <laughs> Um, but whatever pot God has made for us, that's our Uliana, that's our business. And we need to grow into that pot the way God designs it. Now, as the tree grows, guess what happens? The bonsai tree gets pruned, branches get dead and tied down, and all of a sudden they tie down and they start to join into one branch and make these little things disappear. So it's designed to look the way it looks. And every bonsai tree doesn't look the same, but every one is unique. And I started to think about that. That, that is not true. And so I love bonsai trees. You know, and I just think, man, this is so cool. And when I see a bonsai tree, I always think <coughs> the discipline and training it takes to make us beautiful. You see, we need the training to become the image of God. We want to look like Jesus, but we need training. We need to be trained. We need to be bent, right? And, 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 and we need to be going through all these different things in order that we become exactly what God wants us to be. And I don't know about you, but you know, if I was a tree and you cut a branch, I'm ouch. What's even worse? If I'm a tree and you bend the branch, my branch this way, uh, but I'm tending to it that way, that hurts. But in order that the branch doesn't break, do you know that it's a slow process? <coughs> that they allow it time to gradually turn this way? Because if they force it too much, it breaks. And God is the same way. He will push, He will put pressure on us to start shaping and molding. But instead of being discouraged, Gary, let's be encouraged because the creation that God is creating in you is one of unique quality and you are one of a kind. But God needs your bonsai tree along with everybody else's bonsai tree to be a testimony <coughs> of the tree of life. Does that make sense? Let's pray. Lord God, Father,